Today we're going to be doing a bit of an experiment with my 3D printer. Now, recently I've been having some issues with print quality on my machine, and I've decided to go ahead and change out the nozzle. And somehow, in doing so, I have managed to break the thermistor for my printer. So the thermistor is this little tiny glass bead thing, and it just has, it looks like a piece of it chipped off, and it no longer works correctly. When I plug it into the printer, the printer always just reads zero degrees, so it kind of acts like the thermistor is unhooked. So today I want to do two different experiments. Both experiments are going to simulate things that could potentially happen with the 3D printer. The first one is going to simulate a disconnected or broken thermistor. So I'm going to have, I'm going to put the heater cartridge back into the heater block. We're going to see how hot this thing gets without the thermistor to tell the control board what temperature this is at. And the second thing I'm going to do is just run the heater cartridge by itself which could simulate the screw getting loose on this guy and then your 3D printer just pulling the heater cartridge right out of the block. And then of course, because the heater cartridge isn't in the block, your printer no longer knows what temperature the cartridge is, so it's just kind of hanging out there, probably running at full power. But we're gonna see how my printer performs, what it does. Most modern printers have safety devices in place in the firmware to keep things like this from becoming a big problem and causing fires or things like that. I do not believe that my printer has these safety features though, but we are going to find out. So without further ado, let's go ahead and start our experiments. So we have everything plugged back into the printer the way that it normally would be, including the thermocouple, though right now our printer is reading the temperature of the extruder to be zero degrees. And I just have a thermocouple stuck into the part where there should be the thermistor. Uh, the heat shrink around this thermocouple is probably going to end up melting, but that's all right. And our thermocouple goes off to this multimeter over here. So we're just going to go ahead and try to heat up the extruder. We're going to set it to uh, 210 degrees, and we're going to see what happens. Apparently what happens is you have the thermocouple plugged in backwards. That makes more sense. So as this heats up, keep in mind the controller board of the printer still thinks that it's at zero degrees. Now I mentioned this in the beginning of the video, but I don't believe that this printer has any form of safety devices to keep this thing from going into any kind of runaway. And the reason why I think that, I've had the wire for the thermistor on the bed come disconnected before, it actually broke off from the stress of moving back and forth. And the bed temperature was reading zero degrees and it continued to supply full power to the bed. Now, thankfully with the bed, that wasn't such a big deal because the bed reached a maximum temperature of about 110 degrees or so, 112 degrees is what I was measuring. And at that time I was printing ABS, so it wasn't a big deal. So we're already up around 240 degrees. We show no sign of slowing down yet. I'm not sure how good a contact that thermal couple's making inside the uh, the block there, but it should be reasonable. We're at 200, we're over 250 degrees. Now the maximum temperature of this printer is actually supposed to be uh, 250 degrees from the nozzle. Looks like my uh, thermal couple may have lost contact when that stuff moves. There we go, 278, 280 can smell something that seems uh, very hot and melty. I'm assuming that that's the, the heat shrink on that thermal couple starting to melt off. It actually kind of smells like melted uh, ABS or PLA though. Probably ABS, it's probably just uh, some of the excess off of that heater block is starting to burn off. And we are now at 300 degrees Celsius, so this is uh, definitely still climbing. And it didn't take that long to get here. I've only been recording for about four minutes. Now 
330 degrees. I got some smoke rolling off of the uh, if you can see there. Got some smoke coming off of our heater block. I'm assuming that smoke is just like residual plastic that's been stuck to the block that's starting to burn off. We're at over 350 now. And if you're curious, the heater cartridge in this printer is the standard 40 watt one that most of these printers use. We're approaching 400 degrees Celsius. Which mind you, we had it set for 200. And the printer is still convinced that the temperature of the nozzle is zero degrees. And there's 400 and still climbing. Now this is kind of worst case scenario. In a lot of scenarios, you're going to have the parts cooling fan blowing over the heater block as well. But certain cases, you don't have the parts cooling fans on. For example, when you're printing ABS, you wouldn't normally have a parts cooling fan on. So this is still a realistic test. I would also like to note that the nozzle throat, I think it's called, or the heat break, whatever you want to call that piece, and the nozzle were both brand new before I started this test. I think my thermal couple might actually be uh, getting damaged by this now. It doesn't seem to like this. My thermal couple may not have been happy reading this. Also, this might actually have a maximum temperature. I'm not sure what this can read up to. Might not be the thermocouple, it might be the meter maxing out at 450. Anyway, so all I really know right now is that we are at at least 450 degrees and probably still climbing. Yeah, I think my meter max is out at 450 when I pulled that thermocouple back out and started working again. So, unfortunately, I'm not even gonna be able to measure how hot this thing's gonna get because my thermocouple or my meter won't measure it. All right, so all we really know for sure right now is that our temperature of our nozzle is at, at least 450 degrees because, unfortunately, I can't even measure how hot it is because it's maxing out my multimeter. But my next question is, what happens if you were to try to feed a little bit of filament down inside this thing? Um, I'm assuming bad things, especially considering that the filament just melted at the top. I may not even be able to get it all the way down in there. Alright, I'm going to go ahead and turn that off and open a window because that's just spewing smoke out of the nozzle. <laughs> that is uh, it's quite terrible. It didn't light on fire, which I guess is a good thing, but uh, that's, uh, that's not great. Alright, so now that the uh, smoke has cleared and this guy has cooled down a bit, we can go ahead and take a look at its current condition. All right, so the first thing I notice about this is just how discolored this tube and the nut on top of here got. These are quite um, quite darker. These should be nice and shiny. All right, so you can kind of compare the aluminum to what this nut looks like, and you can see how discolored it is. You can also do the same thing with this tube up here. Let's see if we can unscrew it. All right, we'll see if we can't get this tube out entirely. I do have replacement pieces coming for pretty much everything here, including the heater block, so I'm not too worried about damaging any of this stuff. Let's see what this looks like on the end. All right, so this is what the tube looks like now. You can kind of see how it goes from 
really dark and discolored on one end up to still relatively shiny and looking like stainless steel like it should on the other end. Uh, down inside the tube doesn't look uh, too spectacular. Not sure how well this is going to focus on this, but if you look down inside the tube, uh, you can kind of see the uh, PTFE tube that's in there. looks like it's destroyed. And looking at the rest of this, uh, we can go ahead and pull our heater cartridge out, see if that's gotten any more discolored. It was a little bit discolored to, uh, to start with, but I think that's just for normal use. And our heater cartridge looks like it's just a bit more discolored than it was when we started. Uh, probably still in okay shape though. And we'll see if we can get the nozzle out. Now the threads on this heater block were damaged a little bit to start with, so I'm not too surprised that it's seems to be a bit stuck in here. Let's see if we can get it out though. All right, so should unscrew. All right, so really our nozzle doesn't look like it's in too bad a shape. It's got some burnt plastic in it that might uh, end up causing issues, but other than that, I think the nozzle would still be fine. The heater block itself isn't in any worse condition than it was when we started, so that seems okay. And the heater cartridge still seemed to be fully functioning when we were done with our testing. The only thing that really seems to have been destroyed here is the, uh, the tubing on the inside of this guy. And of course that kind of makes sense because the maximum rated temperature for that hot end is only 250 degrees and we got it to at least 450, uh, more than likely well over 450 though, by the way that it was climbing. So anyway, let's move on to our next test. Also, I did notice that my thermal couple does have a maximum temperature rating right on it. It says 300 degrees and we went well over that, but, uh, that's okay. Uh, I do believe that we most certainly had that thing up over 400 degrees Celsius. My measurements may not have been completely accurate because the thermocouple wasn't rated for it, but the point is it got way hotter than it should have. And for our last test, we're just going to see what would happen if the heater cartridge was just run on its own. So we're going to set it up to 200 degrees again. That thing is going to get quite hot quite fast, if I had to guess anyway. It is a 40 watt heater cartridge and it is just running in free air, of course. This is something that could in theory happen if that little set screw that holds it in got loose and it got pulled on by its wires as the printer moved around. So this isn't a completely unrealistic thing to have happen. And I believe that some 3D printer fires have started due to something like this happening and of course not having the appropriate safety measures. Now I'm not going to bother measuring the temperature of the cartridge itself because as we've already proven, my equipment cannot measure temperatures as high as this thing can produce. What I'm thinking is that it's probably going to start glowing red and it looks like it already has. Yes, it has. So uh, that's about what I was expecting to happen. And you can imagine how that would start something on fire if it hit pretty much anything flammable so if that hit your print or the filament or wire casings, pretty much anything that looks like it would have the ability to uh, catch it on fire or you know even the acrylic frame of the printer, uh, at the very least that's going to emit some really bad fumes if that thing were to touch anything. So that's starting to glow a bit like a light bulb and as I said, unfortunately I don't have anything that can measure temperatures that high, but you can imagine we have something that appears to be made out of stainless steel and it's glowing red hot. I will give it this, that heating element seems to be uh, reasonably high quality because it's been glowing like this for a couple of minutes now and it's, uh, it's not showing any signs of uh, wanting to burn out, so I'm kind of impressed with that. And also I can feel the heat off of this thing from way up higher than this even. I can probably feel it from up here, so it's... Uh, it's definitely hot. We'll go ahead and turn it back off now and let it cool down. So you can see our heater cartridge has now turned a much darker color, though it was still in functioning condition, surprisingly. So anyway, that concludes this test. Now I believe that most modern 3D printer firmwares have these safety checks enabled by default, and the only reason why they would be turned off is if the company that 
produces the printer has turned off those checks in the firmware. And of course, most modern 3D printers have these checks enabled, so it's not that big of a deal anymore. But things can still go wrong, especially on cheaper printers, stuff like, I believe the ANET A8 has issues where this stuff isn't enabled, just like it is on my printer. Now I mentioned this in the video as well, but in the past I've had the heated bed thermistor wires break on this printer, and that caused a similar issue where the bed just rose in temperature. But thankfully with the bed, it maxed out at about 110 or 112 degrees Celsius, so it wasn't that big of a deal, especially because at that time I was printing AVS. Now the interesting thing with the thermistor wires breaking on the bed to this guy is that it just completely lost all control of the bed. I could not shut it off, which was quite interesting. And I believe what happened is that normally when you go to shut off either heater on a 3D printer, you set it to zero degrees, or that's effectively what the software does. And I'm assuming that the firmware in the controller was reading the bed temperature as negative with that disconnected wire. So it never actually shut the bed off. It continued trying to heat it to zero degrees when it thought that it was a negative temperature. And that caused a bit of an issue, of course, because uh, the bed could not be turned off. Though on this machine, the bed maxed out at a reasonably safe temperature as compared to what we saw today with the hot end. So anyway, that about concludes this video. It's just something that I thought would be worth pointing out what can happen with these machines if they don't have the safety checks in place. And also if you own one of these 3D printers, it might be worth checking to see if you do have these safety checks in place. And the easiest way to do that is just to disconnect one of the thermal couple wires and see if the machine will still heat up the nozzle or not. If it doesn't attempt to heat the nozzle with a thermal couple disconnected, that means that you do have the safety measures in place, of course. So anyway, hopefully you guys found that video interesting, and if you did, go ahead and like this video. If you've had any similar issues with your 3D printers to what we simulated today, I'd love to hear about that in the comments. And if you'd like to see more of this content, go ahead and click on the subscribe button. Anyway, that's about it for now, guys. Bye.